Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about your spawn point, which is where you'll show up when you die. When you first start playing the game, you'll spawn in the center of the world, right here. The bed is available very early on in the game, as soon as you start getting wood. After you make a workbench, you'll be able to make a bed for 8 wood. Once you've placed the bed for the first time, it will be unclaimed. The moment you claim it, then it will become a spawn spot. But in order to become a spawn spot, it needs to be in shelter, which means it needs to be underneath something. So the bed placed in an open clearing like this won't be usable as a spawn spot. We can use some sort of structure to work around this. Usually it's nice to place the bed right up against some kind of rock or wall, just like that place some of the roof tiles, sort of at an angle like this. And this will allow you to make a spawn spot, and then you can get rid of everything, and the spawn spot is still there. This alone is really useful. The problem though, is that now an enemy is attracted to this, right? They're gonna come and destroy your spawn spot. And then, once your bed is destroyed, once that spawn spot is gone, you go right back to the center of the world should you die after your bed is destroyed. This is why it's so important to keep the beds in a safe place. But don't- There's a few general rules of thumb when you're making your beds for your spawn spot. One of them is that you should never put beds on the ground. This is just because monsters are almost always on ground level, so they can attack your bed. And what you'll find is that they often accidentally destroy your bed, because they're attacking you or something else nearby. Simply by raising your spawn spot to be off the ground, somewhere up here, for example, you would then just survive more attacks. And if you really want to be safe, then you should get super high, like twice as high, around up here. We're gonna use this corner right here, and then you should be able to sort of clip the bed into the corner. And that's really helpful because it's going to help the bed have shelter. And then you can just overdo roofs on the top, and then you can set your spawn. This use The next kind of spawn spot is easy to make in any kind of elevated cliff-like terrain. In Valheim, in various biomes, you'll find these sort of ravines that cut through them, right? So these actually can be mined if you have a basic pickaxe. You want to pick one spot and then just make sure your pickaxe is hitting that same spot. And then just hit it a couple times to make this sort of edge here. Because what we're actually going to do is make a pit now that we've made this edge. See how the gray dwarfs are stuck up there? This is exactly the kind of thing that you want to take advantage of. And you see how we've made this little ledge here? This is problematic because the monsters can just come onto this ledge and then push each other and then fall into the hole. We don't want that. So we're going to go down on this side and make it basically a wall instead of a ledge. Now the monsters are going to fall into this little ledge area here. Meanwhile, the player can just jump over the ledge just like... And I made this a little bit too big. Because you're just trying to make a spawn spot, you can actually make it smaller. And then boom, we have a spawn spot. Look at that. And these are quite safe because of the elevation. You can see monsters really have a, a, a really hard time. Even the trolls, when they come over here, like worst case scenario, they fall down onto the top of your base and then they can start doing some damage. But that doesn't really happen often. Usually, as you see, the monsters just kind of run around and maybe accumulate over here and maybe you'll get poisoned by a gray dwarf. But these are now, in the other biomes, such as the mountains and the plains, you won't always have as much peace as you have it. <laughs> so you'll have to get pretty good at dodging enemies. And I often find that the faster you can move, the better. And you really need to learn the enemy's attacks and behaviors, and particularly where you're safe from them. And really, in the mountains, the safest spots are really up high, where enemies don't really spawn that often. So see that rock over there? That is a much safer place than where I am right now, so we're going to try and get there. There we go. Now we can go up here. And this is the kind of area that's quite promising 
no enemies aside from flying enemies can navigate up to these rocks. So now what we can do is sort of dig into them to make it safe from even flying enemies. Let's find an area we have to slide into that already has some good kind of shelter perspective. And then pick, oh, try and pick one spot and damage that one spot. Because you need to see how the rocks break. Whoa, that was perfect, look at that. And you don't want to break the rocks that are above you. So just go on the ones that are below you. And let's try and make a little cranny right here. And now this would be a great little spawn spot right here. And the bed should be placed sort of somewhere out of the way, kind of tucked into a cranny, just like that. And now we can claim it, and we have a safe spawn spot in the mountains. And as you saw, I ran here while being chased by wolves. So you can find safety. And ideally, you stash it with food and that kind of thing. But these little hidden nooks and crannies are going to make your life a lot easier. Because now, really let's imagine that you find yourself in a pinch. You've made a spawn spot somewhere, but you spawn there and you've used up all of the consumables. You don't have any health or any stamina. Well, there's a way to deal with that. All you do is open the chat and type slash and then reset spawn. But it'll reset your character's spawn spot to the center of the world. And then all you need to do is type slash die, which will kill your character. After that, you'll respawn at the center of the world. Thanks for watching, everybody! If you want to support my work, then consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server from Zap Hosting. This is a great way to play Valheim because it makes the world feel more alive and interesting. Because instead of having your own world that you invite other people to play on, it's a world that you play on that other people can also play on. And it's really fascinating seeing the kinds of events that unfold, and it just makes the world feel more alive, just being able to press F2 and see that there's other people logged on. It does something. I don't know how to explain it, but it makes the world feel more mysterious. When you're playing single player, you get to a point where your brain recognizes all the patterns, and because you're the one input, um, you, can, you can predict everything that's going to happen. But as soon as there's other people doing stuff, you can no longer predict <laughs> what's going to happen, right? So it makes the world much more interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you want to comment below, let me know any kind of tutorial that you would like me to make a video about. I love making Valheim tutorials. It's really fun. See you next time.